My name is Victor Irving Jenkins from Crave the Spotlight Media Marketing. We're here in Sacramento, California today, and we've got a special edition of Experts in the Spotlight. Yeah, from time to time, we produce these shows, the Experts in the Spotlight, and tonight we're having a phenomenal expert. He's a Sacramento native. We think you're going to enjoy this interview. You're going to find out lots of things about him, and perhaps you will like him enough to indulge in him just like the rest of us. I'd like to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to our guest for this evening, Mr. Kariga Bailey. How you doing? Hey, Kariga, how you pleasure, doing? Pleasure to be here, Victor. Pleasure to be here. So, uh, so you're in Sacramento today, but this is not where you live now, is that right? Correct. It's not where I live. It's it's definitely part of my home base. It's definitely part of uh, what I would call my social responsibility. Um, but I, I'm in D.C. these days. I'm home in California, Sacramento, uh, for my book signing, uh, particularly, and my documentary screening. Uh, those things took place uh, just a day ago. Uh, quite a pleasure. And... Um, I have a concert still um, at Harlow's. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to be able to present this type of hope music. Um, then I have a, another engagement with uh, Mayor Johnson and the Indivisible Initiative. So it's quite a lineup. Kariga, all the things that you just told me, do you have a job too? I do have a job. I, um, I report to work each day as the Dean of Students at Maya Angelou Public Charter in D.C. Um, and it's funny that you should ask that question because I manage my relationships here in California still as well as I do that in D.C. Uh, my students know my schedule. Uh, they know when uh, they know what weekends I'm going to be out of town. Uh, and they totally support it. They love watching their dean travel and serve them full time and making sure that I'm having the conviction to follow my dream. Now before we get too much into what your dream entails and the surrender project that you're doing. I think it would be good for us to know a little bit about you, right? Uh, do, you, do you have a wife? Do you have children? I do have a wife. I'm happily married to Miss Felicia. Um, we live in D.C. We don't have children yet, although I will say that the capacity by which I serve my students um, has certainly taken on some ownership and, and a lot like fathering. I never thought that uh, I would be in this function of what someone could perceive as a father figure to people who are so close to me in age in terms of generation. But, uh, yeah, we don't have children yet. Um, we're in D.C. together uh, and happily married. Well, what about your family of origin? Do you have brothers, sisters, mother, father? I have a great family who kind of shaped me to who I am today. I come from a large family, um, a Caribbean family. My mother and father are Jamaican. I have seven brothers and sisters, and we are all very close. Uh, we are all very uh, alike in a lot of ways. The family unit is very tight. We keep in contact regularly, um, and we are rich in love. And I think that's one of the things that really defines such our, our large family. You know, recently I read something you wrote about something that impacted the way that you feel about relationships. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I. Um, there was a lot of media going around um, as what defines marriage and 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 who supports marriage and. And I said that supporting my marriage, myself, is my primary responsibility. And that is doing the things necessary to strengthen it and enjoy its quality. And there are a lot of things that help invite these values into my conversation. Um, it came while I was at study at Hampton University. And I took a course with Dr. Linda Malone Kalan, and she uh, taught on black marital relations. And we had a conference in which I was invited back to speak and Chick-fil-A was one of the sponsors there. And I heard from uh, Kathy Truitt. Mm -hmm. And I saw what the principles were uh, of the company. And I, I observed and I appreciated their investment in this marriage conversation, this forum. And I was an onlooker at the time. I was dating Felicia. And I knew that there were some values that I wanted to uphold uh, in the formation of my family. Uh, in fact, it was at that very same conference that one of the segments from one of my poems came into play and I said that um, instead of call it settling down, we should call it setting up to build up. And having this fundamental change and shift in language for young people would make marriage and sustainable relationships more attractive because settling down is certainly not attractive <laughs> to anyone in their youth who has tons of living and traveling yeah. to do. Uh -huh. right? But if you change that language and change the perception and um, Chick-fil-A just had played a great part in providing us with the resources 
to have this beautiful conversation. And I was, I was very thankful for that. So what you're seeing is, instead of describing the step in adulthood that we call marriage, instead of defining that as settling down, we should define it as... Setting up to build up and understanding partnership and understanding goals and understanding each other and the, the, just the myriad of data that speaks to the quality of life when married and the quality of earning when married and the quality of health and longevity when married. Introduce these things as a setup to build up um, because certainly in my generation identified as the um, X, Y or the entrepreneurs and we don't, we don't want to report to work and we have these aspirations then helping understand how relationships, just the human in involvement, can help you achieve that, I think is very important. And um, it was a large influence on why I selected Felicia uh, to be my bride and now my wife and my partner, and we just achieved incredibly together.